Amen. Thank you, Darren. Uh, good evening, brothers and sisters and visitors. Uh, tonight, um, this is a this is the last Bible class of the year, I believe, isn't it? I can't believe we've gone through a whole year studying the life of Christ, and now we're we're nearing very near to the end. We and actually so tonight, have one more Bible class, bro. Oh, do we? <laughs> okay. Um, so tonight we'll be discussing the miracles of the cross. Um, and hopefully what we'll get out of this is we'll appreciate even more what Jesus has done for us. And so there are four major miracles associated with the cross. The first one being the darkening of the sun. The second being the mighty earthquake. The third being the rending or tearing of the temple veil. And then the fourth being the opening of the graves and the resurrection of the dead. And so let's begin by examining the first miracle, the darkness, right? Uh, a divine portent or, or sign or wondering. The Bible says in Matthew 27, verse 45, it says, Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over the land. When we talk six and nine, we're talking about noon to about 3 p.m., right? Mark. 1533 says it this way. Now, when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And again, in Luke 23, 44, it says, now it was about the sixth hour and there was darkness over the earth until the ninth hour. What was happening prior to this darkness? Jesus himself was praying for his enemies. He was taking care of his mother. He was saving a thief. Um, Jesus's enemies were busy casting lots. Women were weeping. John was leading Jesus's mother away. And then all of a sudden, with all this activity going on, all of a sudden, all activity stops. Why does it stop? Because the Bible says darkness came over the whole land. And I know we think that maybe it got cloudy on that day, but that is not the description that is given in the scriptures. Um, it, it says darkness um, has come over the whole land. And if you've ever experienced where the sun has been cut off during the day, that means that darkness has literally come into the land and that everything that would be awake at night would be awake during that time because the sun cannot be seen at that time. This was not a natural event, right? This was a divine event. It was not an eclipse because it is impossible to have an eclipse during the Passover because the Passover is celebrated during a full moon, which means the sun and the moon are on opposite sides of the earth. Not could not be a full um, an eclipse. And so what does it all mean? God drew a mantle of darkness over the greatest mystery of the ages, how one man could die for the sins of billions. And how did God bring that to everyone's attention? By putting darkness over the whole land. I can tell you it's an amazing thing when you see in the middle of the day, darkness come over the whole land. Although this wasn't an eclipse, I have been a part of a full eclipse and wow, it is amazing. I mean, you, are, you stand in awe when you realize that literally it's dark. Can't see um, your hand in front of your face because it's completely dark. I believe that's what happened here. The second miracle is the earthquake. And this is God's divine power. Uh, and, and, you know, let's set this up. We need to set these things up in the right order. So we have darkness that went over the whole land. And now we have this earthquake, this divine power where Jesus initiates the earthquake by saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then as the scriptures read, the earth begins to shake and the rocks split and the graves were opened. Now, if you had any common sense, Jesus saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Darkness over the whole land. And then all of a sudden an earthquake happens. Wow. This was God's demonstration of his power. You know, for all the people who may have thought <clears throat> the Romans were in charge or the Jewish um, religious leaders were in charge, God was reminding everyone who's in charge. 
he's in charge of of the sky with the darkness and he's in charge of the land with the shaking when the law of Moses was given to Mo uh, when the law was given to Moses on Mount Sinai the whole mountain quaked violently Exodus 19:18 now that the law was fulfilled the earth quaked again we see God immediately working um, to to show that there was being a change was happening didn't just show up in the in the darkness it didn't just show up in the quaking but it even showed up in the centurion who was standing there and exclaimed, surely this was the son of God, right? What was he, what was he acknowledging? He was acknowledging that everything that's happening up to this point is clearly something connected to a divine power. And that this man that we were crucifying, of which I'm sure he's seen many crucifixions, but he's never seen it like this before. He's never seen it like this before. And so he exclaimed, surely this was the son of God. Let's talk about the veil that was torn. Divine purpose. The Bible says in Matthew 27, 51, then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom and the earth quaked and the rocks were split. Mark 15, 38 says the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Luke 23, 45 says, then the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was torn in two. Now, it's very interesting how the Bible describes this tearing of the temple veil, because it says from top to bottom. And that's very, very important. What happens here? The curtain of the temple was torn at the end of 3 p.m. At 3 p.m. for the Jews, that would have been a time for evening prayer. That would have been a time for people gathering, Jews gathering to pray together. That would have been a time for the priests to go into the temple, into the holy place to offer incense while they prayed. This would have been one of the most sacred places, if not the most sacred place on earth for a Jew. is behind that veil. And the veil that we're talking about is a beautiful veil, 30 feet high, 30 feet wide. Violet, purple, crimson, fine linen. Now, the fact that it tears from the top to the bottom, that 30 feet. Remember, I said 30 feet. So that means this is not an act of vandalism, right? This is not something that happens by accident. No, the tearing of the, the veil is with divine purpose. What does this mean? Essentially, this was the ushering in of the new covenant under. Jesus Christ. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, Colossians 2.14. Ultimately, the rending, the tearing of the veil means that through the death of Jesus, the way of God is open to all people, no longer just for priests, and particularly a high priest. So it's a very, very it's like one person really could go behind the veil. Now everyone has access to God. It's pretty amazing and pretty powerful. And it helps us to see what Jesus' death was all about. The fourth miracle here is the dead raised, a divine promise. The Bible says in Matthew 27, verses 51 through 53, then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they were in, went into the holy city and appeared to many. On the day Jesus died, what happened? Well, the graves were opened. And, and apparently after they were opened, they were left open, right? This was um, it's very close to Passover, so no one wants to be un, uh, unclean for Passover. So these tombs open, everyone says, okay, we'll, we'll get to them later. Um, not knowing that three days later, when Jesus raises from the dead, these people also raise from the dead. Once again, this is God showing, uh, giving us a very clear picture of what's going to happen at the end of all time. We have the opening of the grave. We have the raising of the dead. It's, 
And um, what does this all mean? This is an obvious connection between Christ raising from the dead himself and the promise that he gave to many while he walked the earth, that if you follow him, you will be raised with him. And that's the ultimate promise of the Lord's church, right? We were, we were kind of joking about it before. Someone asked me if I was home and I said, well, I'm not home yet because our ultimate home is a home that we have with Christ Jesus. It's the home and the promise that we have that one day these weak bodies, right, Tom? These weak bodies that get cold and they need ginger and turmeric and we, we have to do all of these things to, to get well. These bodies will be transformed in the twinkling of an eye and the corruptible will put on incorruption and we will be with Christ. Or as the, as the, the angels told the disciples, we will be caught up with him in the sky. And so in conclusion, God touched many things around the cross. He touched the sky, the rocks, the veil, uh, the many saints. He even touched the, the hearts of men like the centurion. The question is, is, will you allow him to touch you? God bless you. Have a great discussion this evening as we go to our breakout groups.